I'm here with Matt, Jeff, and we're going to talk about the first time I ever did a charter flight. Now, I was a ripe old age of 18. I was going to Ohio State University, and I had a side job to help pay for school at a local charter company. So the time was 310 hours, nice airplane. And you know, I'm 18, and we're talking, you know, back in the 60s when there weren't a lot of girls flying. So I figured if I'm 18 and flying, I must really be cool. So since I'm so cool, I'm really feeling sharp, but the director of operations was clever enough to know that a little humility was what I needed. So he called me for my first charter, because I was so cool. Night charter, Columbus, Ohio to Detroit, Michigan. Piece of cake, because I'm cool. So he, he realized that even though I was so cool, that he needed to give me a little humility, teach me a little lesson. So he said, we got a trip for you tonight. Be here at a certain time. You know, it was nine o'clock at night, but that was okay, because I was cool. So we get to the airport. He says, it'll be in that 310 over there. The 310R was a plane I really liked flying. I'm getting everything, the paperwork done, get my pre-flight done, and the hearse pulls up. Hmm. You know, there's three rows of seats in 310. And they hadn't taken any of them out. They put a guy in the second seat in a body bag. But I'm cool, so it's all right. I don't mind at all, because I'm so cool. So, get up to altitude, everything's going good. And I hear behind me. But I'm cool. I'm going to keep on flying. There's no problem here, right? And then I hear a little more scratching. But I'm not going to look. I'm too cool to look. Wait. Fly a little more. Thinking, how far is it to Detroit? I'm looking to see what's going on. And then I hear this. <sighs> now I'm really not going to look. I'm talking to center. And I'm thinking, man, that's not right. This doesn't sound good. I can hear that scratching like there's a noise going on. So I'm going to just, it throttles up a little more. You know, they're not quite at red line yet, so why not? And I asked if I could have an early descent into Detroit. It was a very fast descent. The guy in the back didn't seem to mind too much. And he kind of shut up a little bit, which was fine with me. I get on the ground, there's a hearse there to pick him up. I'm glad to see him go. I don't really know if he's dead at that point. I'm not going to ask. Get my fuel and I head back to Columbus. Director of operations the next day. Said, How was your flight? Well, what he knew that I wasn't smart enough to know at the time was when you go to altitude, embalming fluids expand. So the scratching I was hearing was things starting to happen and uh, was just when those fluids just had to come out a little bit. So I learned my lesson, I got my humility, and I just moved on. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That was my first charter trip. Very good. Can you tell me about flying Twin Beaches? What would you like to know about Twin Beaches? Well, my Twin Beach, most of my Twin Beach experience was flying the mail. And the route was from Dayton, Ohio, to Indianapolis, Indiana, to Huntington, West Virginia. Now that airport sits up higher. There's a river down below. And Indianapolis wasn't too bad in the winter time. Dayton wasn't too bad, but Huntington could be a little challenging. And there were several nights and fly down the river and climb up to the airport. And uh, they weren't real good about plowing runways there. And you can imagine, you know Twin Beach is better than I do, and that tailwheel and the snow and the ice is not a fun thing. And there are many times when I was paying more attention to the ice getting on the wing than when I was doing the flying. But like Twin Beach, they actually tried, when I was first learning to fly one, they were trying to put me in the left seat, which was difficult. I just, don't tell anybody, but I'm not real tall. And when I was flying three tens and stuff, I had this real good cushion. But it didn't really work in the beach. 
and trying to learn to fly an airplane when you don't have rudders, you know, sitting on the right side, you still have the rudders. So I'd argue with them, can't learn over here, I don't have any rudders. But they finally let me in the left side and got to fly a little more and got to really like the airplane, but I solved my height deficiency with some of those mailbags. I throw some behind me, kind of push me up further in the seat. And that worked pretty good. There's sometimes a yoke got a little close, <laughs> but that worked good. And like I say, that's a great old airplane. It's just got so much wonderful history. I like flying it. Did you have any uh, interesting experiences in that airplane that are memorable? <clears throat> well, the one story, which I think I've shared with you before. So when I had the one FBO in Dayton, had a big showroom and we could actually get like a 421 inside the showroom because a big area but there's also these little settees and that was in the late 70s when airplanes were just selling like crazy and we had it set up we had four rooms off that showroom almost like car salesman kind of thing so we had these nice little setting areas and every saturday morning there was a group of good old boys they were a lot better at hangar flying than real flying. So they knew I was doing that Twin Beach thing every night. And they just kept bugging me about telling them some stories because every Saturday morning that's where they sat and solved all the world problems. So came one Saturday morning, I guess I was fleeing a little bit Henri that morning. So I finally sat down with them after several weeks of them asking me to, we're drinking some coffee. Well, tell us, tell us what happened on one of your flies. Oh, okay. So I said, flight went good, everything was going good, but I was coming back into Dayton, and the weather was getting pretty rough. Ceiling was going down, visibility was going down, but I was getting close, feeling pretty good. But I hit the outer marker and my right engine quit. And then I leaned a little bit forward, listening a little better than to me. So. And, oh, yeah, yeah. They said, then what happened? I said, well, I was picking up ice. Had that engine out, but I got everything set up. I'm okay. Left engine went out. <gasps> and I just stopped talking. And they go, well, what happened? I said, well, I crashed and I died. And they go, oh, no, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that just hold you for a little while. That's one of my favorite stories. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> uh, those old boys. Oh, no.